<laughs> All right, back with chapter uh, two. Talks about Nebuchadnezzar's dream. It says this, or chapter two, verse one. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. So whatever whatever he was dreaming about, I mean, it tells you it tells you later what he was dreaming about. But what you know what he was dreaming about was uh, it scared him. So it scared him so much to where he couldn't sleep at night. And the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, or you know the Babylonians be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I had a dream, my, my spirit is troubled or afraid to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans um, said to the king in Aramaic, Aramaic is, of course, the ancient Hebrew language of the Old Testament. Um, and also, I mean, it, it was also around during, during Jesus' time, too, because Jesus spoke in Aramaic. Um, it says that then the Chaldeans, who were the Babylonians, said to the king of Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will, we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word from me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its, and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb, and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered a second time and said, Let well, the king tell his servants the dream and we will show his interpretation. The king answered and said, I know that with certainty that you are trying to gain time because you see, the, could you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me its interpretations. So basically, he's warning them: don't lie. You know, whatever I'm saying to you, be truthful about it. He's saying, you know, if I find out you're lying, I'm, I'm going to pretty much kill you. I mean, that's what he's telling his uh, his his people. Um, it says, uh, verse ten: the Chaldeans answered the king and said, "There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand, for no great and powerful king." has asked such a thing of any magician or, or enchanter or Chaldean. The things that the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods or demons whose dwelling, in, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Um, so, you know, so these people, <laughs> these Babylonians, they're, they're relying on the demons to show them the truth, and they, are, they should already know that demons and, you know, demons and Satan... They're not truthful. They're they're liars. They're they're evil. They're going to lie to you. They're they're going to they're going to deceive you. Um, the only person you can the only person you can rely on the only person the only person you can rely on um, that's the that's the uh, I'm trying to think of the word that's uh or the only the only God that you can rely on that that is truthful is Christ Himself. You know, it's God Almighty. Um, you know, he's the only God that's going to lead you down the right path. He's the only God that's going to lead you to to do righteousness. You know, you know to live your life right. Um, there is no other God out there. There is fault. There is many false gods out there that, that don't even exist. They're false. But but there's only one God out there out there that's going to lead you down the right path, and that's Christ Himself, God Almighty. Um, uh, it says, uh, let's see here. Verse 12, because of this, king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the, vi- all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So, so the uh, decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Ariot, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Ariot, the king's captain, why is the, why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the matter known to Daniel, and Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. God reveals Nebuchadnezzar's dream. This is when, of course, God um, tells the dream to Daniel. Then Daniel went. Then Daniel, Daniel went to the house. Went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and, his, and Azariah, his companions. And he told and he told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven, who's Christ, concerning the concerning this mystery. So that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of his wise men of Babylon. And the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night, that Daniel blessed the God of heaven, who is Christ. 
Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in, dar- what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and might, and have now made known to me what we ask of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went into Arioch, whom, uh, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said, to, he went and said thus to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. And Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste or in hurry, and said thus to him, I have found among the exiles from Judah a man who, who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king declared Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. Are you, are you able to, sh- to make known to me the dream that I have seen this interpretations? Daniel answered the king and said, No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show to the king the mystery that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar that what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head as you lay in bed are these. To you, a king, as you lay in bed came, to, came thoughts of what would be after this, and he who reveals mysteries made known to you that uh, what is to be. But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, and not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living, but in order that the interpretation may be uh, known to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your mind. Daniel interprets the dream. You saw the king, and behold, a great image. This image, mighty and of exceeding brightness, stood before you, and its appearance was frightening. The head of this image was of fine gold. Its chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. As you looked, a stone was cut out by no, by no human hand and struck the image of its, on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Now, if you know the, you know, if you know the dream, if you know the word of God, you know that the, this image represents kingdoms um, that, that are going to rise up. And the big boulder is God, you know, is God throwing this boulder and destroying all these kingdoms. Um, so, that's that. It says, uh, 36. No? As you, no, it says, As you looked, a stone was cut out by another human hand and struck the images on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces so God is going to destroy all these kingdoms. Then the iron, the clay, and the, the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the shaft of the summer and threshing floors, and the wind of carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So God's kingdom is going to be like a great mountain and it's going to fill the whole earth. This was this was a dream. Now we will tell the king his interpretation. You, O king, the king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, and the might, and the glory, and to whose hand he has given to wherever they dwell, the children of man, the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, making you rule over 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 them all. You are the head of gold. Um, so the first kingdom that was to rise at this time um, where the first kingdom to actually arise um, in the Old Testament was, of course, Babylon. It says, um, it says, You're the head of gold. Another kingdom inferior to you shall rise after you, and yet, and yet a third kingdom of bronze. So when you, when you study this image, the first kingdom that arose was Babylon, which is the head of gold. And then you had the uh, chest of the, uh, of the statue, which represented... Um, the Medes and Persians, um, which is, you know, uh, of course, the Medes and Persians attacked um, Babylon and destroyed it. And, it, and it'll get down to other kingdoms here in a minute. It says, uh, But the stone struck, the image of King Grand Mal, and I feel the whole earth. This was a dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. You, a king, the king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, and the might, and glory, and to whose hand he is given. Wherever they dwell, the children of men, the beasts, the field, and the birds of the heavens, making you rule over them all. You are the head of gold. So Babylon was the first kingdom of the Old Testament that arose from the earth. 
another kingdom inferior, inferior to you shall arise after you, which is the Medes and Persians. The Medes and Persians attacked, the, attacked Babylon, destroyed them, sending so the Medes and Persians and became the second kingdom to arise. And then, and yet a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the earth. Um, so, when you read of this, it says here in 39, it says, uh, another kingdom inferior to you shall arise after you, and yet a third kingdom of bronze. The bronze represents, many people, are, many people believe the bronze represents um, ancient Greece, you know, the, the Greeks who um, attacked Persia and destroyed the Persian Empire, and then the Greeks took over. And then whenever Rome, um, or whenever Rome came to, or whenever Rome arose, Rome defeated the Greeks, destroyed the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire came came to be. It says, Another kingdom feared you shall arise after you, and yet third kingdom of bronze. Um, so let's start back over real quick to get to, get to, uh, to get this situated. It says, uh, let's see here. It says, you are the head of gold, which is Babylon. They are destroyed um, by, this is another kingdom, a figure to you shall rise after you yet. And that kingdom was the Medes and Persians. They attacked Babylon, destroyed Babylon. Medes and Persians arose. And the Medes and, and, yet, and yet a third kingdom of bronze arose. That kingdom was the Greeks. The Greeks arose. They, they destroyed the, Medes, the Medes and Persians. And then, um, and then, uh, one of the Greeks took over. It says, um, "Which shall rule over the earth, and there shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron." That was the Romans. Whenever the Romans ar um, arise, they destroy the Greek Empire, and then the Romans became the next world power. This is because 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 iron breaks breaks to pieces and shatters all things. So of course, Rome, the Romans became the next great empire. And like iron that crushes it, shall will break and crush all of these. And as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But some of the furnace, but some of the fir firmness of iron shall be in it, just as, you saw, just as you saw iron mixed with the soft clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to, to another people. It shall break in pieces these kingdoms and, and bring them to an end. So what it's talking about is when you start, when you start at the, uh, with the statue, you have the, um, the head of gold, which is the Babylonian Empire. Babylonian Empire falls to the Medes and, per the Medes and Persians. The Medes and Persians arise. They fall to the Greeks. The Greeks arise. They fall to the Romans. The Romans arise. And then when it gets to like, you know, I've heard about this also, when it gets to like the feet and toes, there's, there's a lot of debate about that. A lot of people think that's talking about the New World Order. Um, it could be, you know, who knows. Um, about, about the, the ten toes represents ten divisions, and how supposedly the new the, the new world order is going to break that. The, the, the new world order is going to put like the the world into like ten different sectors or whatever. Um, I've heard of that also. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just things I've heard. I mean, we won't know until it actually happens, but. I've heard a lot of theories about about the ten toes, and supposedly, like I said, the new order will come to power, and they will they will uh, divide the earth in ten parts. Who knows? But um, and then of course Christ returns and you know, destroys the new world order and sets his kingdom up for all eternity on earth. So, uh, moving on, it says in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand before ever, just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain, and this interpretation is sure. Um, so, summarizing this up real quick the statue. Um, you have, you have the head of gold, which is Babylon. Babylon falls to Medes and Persians. 
Medes and Persians followed the Greeks, the Greeks followed the Romans, and the Romans empire, you know, it, it fell. And then supposedly um, there's this new world order supposed to, you know, arise and take over the world, and they're supposed to divide the earth in ten sectors, and you know, and then Christ will return to destroy the new world order and set up his own kingdom earth for all eternity. So that's basically what's talking about. Um, it says Daniel is promoted. The king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and paid homage to Daniel, and commanded that an offering and incense be offered up to him. The king answered and said to Daniel, Truly your God is God of gods. Of course. Read that again. Truly your God, who's Christ, God Almighty, is God of gods, meaning that he is God over all. He, he, is, the, he is God himself. And Jesus Christ says, God, he's over, he's over it all, man. He's, he's sovereign. He's over good. He's over evil. He's over everything. Everything that happens in your life, everything that happens on this earth, is because... Cross the ladder to heaven for a reason. You know, it, it, um, the main thing is he allows things to happen for his glory, um, and whether it's good or evil, things happen for a reason, and that's true. But he allows things to happen for his glory, and if you're saved, for your benefit. So, so yes, and Jesus is the God of gods. He is God Himself. He's over everything. Um, you know, even Satan. And the demons of hell, even they have to get permission from God, from Christ, to do things here on earth. Um, they can't. They can't do anything without, you know, God's permission, because God is over them. I mean, all you gotta do is, is, is uh, read, read uh, Job. Truly, your God is God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon. So basically Daniel was like number two in the kingdom of Babylon. He was like he was like you know, the next in line in, in a way. Um, so then, the king gave, then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel made a request of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel remained at the king's court. So Daniel got the dream right. Nebuchadnezzar made him second in command, um, right behind you know, right behind him, and um, and then he and then he also made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, over over the affairs of the province of Babylon. That's pretty cool, you know, how God blesses us in a way, you know, God reveals things to his children that he won't reveal to those who are not saved um, so that we can, you know, give, so that, you know, God, God will get the glory and that God will bless us as well. So God will reveal things to his children um, at the right time, you know, not at our time, not when we want it, but at the time when God wants it. So... Yeah, it's pretty cool though how God, you know, worked through Daniel. Um, they have a uh, chart, some charts down here. I want to talk about real quick before I go to the next chapter. Um, it says the rulers during the time of d- rulers during during the time of Daniel. Um, in Babylon, you had Nebuchadnezzar, 605 to 562 BC. Then you had Nabonidus, 556 to 539 BC, and then co-regent Belshazzar, um, which is Daniel. He actually ruled um, Babylon from 550 to 539 B.C. And then in Persia, um, which is our end today, he had Cyrus 539 to 530 B.C. And then Darius I, 522 to 46 B.C. And then he had explicit references of dates in Daniel. You have Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar's first year was 605 B.C. It's in chapter 1. Nebuchadnezzar's second year, 604 B.C., chapter 2. Nebuchadnezzar's reign, 605 to 562 B.C., so in chapter 3 and 4. Belshazzar's first year, um, 550 B.C., um, that was uh, chapter 7. Belshazzar's third year, 548 B.C., is chapter 8. Belshazzar's last year, 539 B.C., was chapter 5. And then in Persia, which is Iran. You had Cyrus's third year, 536 BC, 
to verse 10 through 12. Darius' first year, 522 B.C., was chapter 9. And Darius' reign, 520, 522 B.C. to 46 B.C., is chapter 6. And one more says this. Now, this is the traditional views of Daniel's visions. You have, let's see here, you have the vision of the statue, which is uh, chapter 2. You have the Babylonian, uh, yeah, it's the vision of the statue, chapter 2. The head of gold, which represented the Babylonian Empire, 625, 539 BC, that's verse 36, 38. And then you have the chest and arms in verses 30 39. That represent that represented the Medo Persian Empire, 539 331 BC. And then, then in the middle and thighs of bronze, the Greek Empire, 331 to 63 BC. And then the legs of iron, feet of iron and clay, um, which was the Roman Empire, which was 63 BC to, to AD 476. And then the future events, which was the Messianic Kingdom or Crisis Kingdom. Which represents the stone in this verses uh, 44 to 45. And then you have the vision of the tree in chapter 4, which is Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, that's where Nebuchadnezzar is humbled by God in verses 19 through 37, and that's the Babylonian Empire. And then the vision of the four beasts in chapter 7 says uh, you have the lion, the lion with the wings of the eagle in verse 4, that represents the Babylonian Empire. The bear raised up on one side, verse 5, that's the Media Persian Empire. The leopard with four wings and four heads, verse 6, the Greek Empire. Terrifying beast with iron teeth, which is verse 7, which is the Roman Empire. And then the Antichrist, the little horn uttering great boast, or he's very prideful. He's saying, he's saying hateful things to God and hateful things to God's children, they, verses 8 through 11. And then the vision of the ram and the goat, chapters 8. The ram with two horns, one longer than the other, verse 2 through 4, is the of Persian Empire. And the male goat with one horn, it was broken, and four horns came up, which represents Anakis the fourth, which is in the Greek Empire. That's verses 23 through 26. So that's chapter 2. A lot of stuff to go through, but that's chapter 2. Um, and I'll bet with chapter 3 here shortly.